Welcome Concrete fans. Today, we're gonna talk about mush corrections, but this time, there's gonna be an example problem. Yeah, we get to use numbers. Ha! Mush corrections. We're gonna go over terminology just for a second. The moisture content, that's an important number. That's a number that you really care about because it's the current weight percentage of water inside the aggregate. And this is going to change every day. This is why we have to do moisture corrections. It changes all the time. It has to be monitored so that you can produce very, very consistent concrete. How do you calculate it? Well, as we talked about before, the moisture content is the sample weight <clears throat> minus the oven dry weight divided by the oven dry weight. This whole thing is usually multiplied by 100 to give you a, a percentage. But it, if we use a water-resistant container, as is typically done when you run moisture corrections, because it's kind of hard to just figure out the true weight of the sample or the true oven dry weight of the sample, a container makes life easier. Then you place everything in the container and you weigh it, and then you place it in an oven, and then you weigh it, and you also have to have the weight of the container. That's gonna modify our equations just a bit, but it's gonna make our lives so much easier. For example, if we weigh the bowl, then we weigh out the sample and the bowl together. That's the wet sample. I know it looks like popcorn, but it's not supposed to. It's supposed to be aggregates. And they're shaded because they're wet. And then you dry the sample, put it in an oven, and you cook it again. And if you take the weight of the dry sample plus the bowl, again, why are we doing this? Why is the bowl involved? Because it's easier just to weigh the bowl and the sample together than it is to try to isolate the sample for the measurement. So if we call this term one and this term two and this term three, then our equation is modified. If you take the wet sample plus the bowl minus the dry sample plus the bowl and divide by the dry sample plus the bowl minus the bowl, look at this. This bowl is gonna cancel with this bowl and this bowl is gonna cancel with this bowl and you're going to get what you want, the moisture content. There's another number that's really important. It's called the absorption capacity. It's the weight percentage of water that an aggregate can possibly absorb in its pores, not on the outside, just inside the pores. And this is a number that you need before you can start doing a moisture correction. And watch the other video if you've forgotten how to get it. So, now that we have the moisture content and we have the absorption capacity, we basically compare the two together. And this is really helpful to give you a feeling on what the numbers should tell you to do. It's always important to get a feel, again, for your numbers before you get started. If your moisture content is greater than your absorption capacity, that means you have more water in and on top of the aggregate than it could possibly absorb in the pores. And that means the aggregate is greater than SSD, greater than the magical, mystical, saturated surface dry. And water needs to be removed and aggregate needs to be added. This means from a shovel, if you have a shovel full of material or 100 pounds of material, that you have to take some water out of that and you need to add some aggregate. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry. It's all gonna take care of itself in the math coming up. But if the moisture content happens to be lower than the absorption capacity, that means the aggregate is lower than SSD. That means you need to add water and you need to take aggregates out. And the mass of the aggregates you add or remove is equal to the mass of the water you remove or add. And I have this different orders here because if you're adding aggregates, you have to remove water. And if you're removing aggregates, you have to add water. And they're always in the opposite direction. And don't worry, this is gonna make more sense once we do a little bit of math. So here we go, let's do an example problem. It's gonna make a moisture correction for the following mixture. This mixture has 256 pounds of water, 609 pounds of cement, 1807 pounds of aggregate, and 1254 pounds of aggregate number two. This is like the coarse aggregate. And this is like the fine aggregate. And all of these things, all these pounds, these are pounds per cubic yard. And when we design concrete mixtures, we usually design them for either um, pounds per cubic yard or kilograms per cubic meter, depending on where you're at and what you're trying to do. And don't worry, all of this works the same for both of these. But these are all SSD weights. 
saturated surface dry weights. That's really important. It makes the moisture corrections a lot easier to do. Now I've got some weights here of the bowl, the bowl plus the wet aggregates, the bowl plus the dry aggregates, and the absorption capacity. Let's use all these numbers to work an example problem. All right, this is a worksheet. There's also a spreadsheet that should be available in the comments section at the bottom. This, can, this spreadsheet's actually programmed to do this for you, but it's really important to know how to do the math yourself. It's critical. You, you won't always have a computer, and sometimes if the, if the computer's giving you weird numbers, you need to be able to calculate it yourself. Get a feel for it. It also helps you learn it much more deeply. So let's start writing down some of the basic things that were given in the problem. The mixture design, that information goes right here in the batch weights. So we had 609 pounds of cement. We had 1,807 pounds per cubic yard of aggregate number one. That's probably the coarse aggregate. We had 1,254 pounds of aggregate number two. That's the fine aggregate. And then we had 256 pounds of water. Those are just givens. If you total all of those numbers up, the total sum of the weight is 3,926 pounds. You're actually going to see this over and over again that most of the time, with most normal weight concrete mixtures, that the pounds per cubic yard is close to 4,000. It's close to two tons. All right. Let's go up to this worksheet at the top. Let's write down the other things we know. The bowl weight was 0.539 pounds. It's important to use three decimal places on all these calculations. The wet aggregate plus the bowl was 4.370 pounds. The oven dry aggregate plus the bowl was 4.359 pounds. Okay. Let's add this other information for aggregate number two. The bowl was a little bit heavier, 3.299 pounds, 3.224 pounds. This is just an example, by the way, too. This is a, a lab mixture, and you may use a lot, you may need a lot more aggregate if you're doing the moisture corrections on a field mixture. So now let's calculate our actual moisture content. Let's do some math. So we're gonna say actual moisture content for aggregate number one. That's equal to 4.370 minus 4.359 all divided by 4.359 minus 0.539. I've taken the wet aggregate plus the bowl minus the dry aggregate plus the bowl divided by the dry aggregate minus the bowl minus the bowl. That's just the equation I showed you before. And that's equal to 0 0.288. 0 0.2 Eight, eight. And we're going to call that answer number one, or calc number one. And that goes right here. 0 0.288. Now let's do actual moisture content for aggregate number two. So we're going to do the same calculation that we just did. But now it's for, moisture, it's for aggregate number two. 3.299 minus 3.224, all divided by 3.224 minus 0 0.609. And that happens to be equal to 2.868. Again, three decimal places, that's important. So this number is 2.868, and this was calc number one, 
and this was calc number two, and this was also calc number two. Great. Moving along. Now, we need our absorption capacity. That's the total amount of water that the aggregate can absorb in the pores. And it was given in the problem that this was 1% absorption, and this is a 0.55. And this is, these are real numbers. Okay, this is real materials. So now we've got to calculate a correction factor. This correction factor was covered in the first video. This correction factor is also outlined right here. 100 plus the actual moisture content divided by 100 plus the absorption. Okay? And these are ones where you just use the percent. You don't put the decimal in. So we're going to use correction factor for aggregate number one. So that's 100 plus 0 0.288. That's the moisture content from aggregate number one divided by 100 plus one. That's the absorption for aggregate number one. And that is equal to 0 0.993. And that is gonna be calculation number three. And it goes right here, 0 0.933 calc number three. Now let's look at calc number four here. We're going to do it again, but we're going to do this for aggregate number two. Again, our correction factor 100 plus 2.868 all divided by 100 plus 0 0.55. And that's equal to 1.023. Again, three decimal places are where you want to be. And that's number four, 1.023, number four. Great. We now have our top table completed, okay? And now we're ready to move down to the bottom table. So this is what we, this column right here is what we batched. It's what we designed. It's what we designed on a piece of paper. It's not, it's not what we batched. I'm, I misspoke earlier. In this column right here, this is what we've designed on a piece of paper. And this is what we're shooting to batch or make. This is supposed to be corrected for the amount of water differences than what we assumed. Now, we made no assumptions about cement, so it comes right over. And we have no assumptions about moisture content of SCMs. They should be dry. should come right over. But we did make an assumption about aggregate number one. We assumed originally that it's at SSD, and it's not. And we need to put the moisture correction factor right here. That's 0 0.933. That's the same thing as item number three. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put 1.023, and that's the same thing as calc number four. And now we're going to calculate the actual amount of batch weight. And the way we do that is we take the SSD batch weight, which was 1807, and then we're going to multiply by our correction factor, 0 0.933. Okay. And when we do that, nine, pardon me, 0 0.933, ha, and then we're going to get 1794, 1794, that's calc number five, 1794, so let's do that again, now with aggregate number two. So we're going to take the 1254, we're going to multiply it by 1.023, and we're going to get 1283, and that's item number six, calc number six, 1283, number six. Now I like to do this. I like to talk about, I like to calculate my change in weight. This is pretty easy 
But this is where you take your corrected weight minus the batch weight. So 1794 minus 1807. And that gives you a negative 13 pounds. That means you pulled 13 pounds of aggregate out. Why do we do that? Well, if we go back to the top, our actual moisture content was much lower than our absorption capacity. So our moisture correction factor was lower than one. Our aggregate is less than SSD. Okay? So that means when we weighed out a certain amount of aggregate, it was too much. So we have to take some of that aggregate out, 13 pounds of it to be exact, that's calc number seven. Let's do this again for aggregate number two. So again, we'll take 1283, the batch weight, minus the original weight, and that's 29 pounds. And that's calc number eight, 29 pounds. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One is negative and one is positive. Why? Let's go back and look. Look at this moisture content, 2.868. It's much higher than the absorption. This is wetter than SSD. It's got more water on it, quite a bit more water on it. And that's why when we weighed out a certain amount of aggregate, we, made a, a, we weighed out um, not enough. We weighed out aggregate plus water. So we have to add more aggregate in to correct for that. Now, if we calculate the change, what we changed here, if we basically take, um, if we calculate this, this change, this would be we added, we took had to take away 13 pounds of one aggregate. We had to add in 29 pounds of another aggregate. And then our water has to be added, has to be the opposite of this, basically, to make it equal to zero. That's what we talked about before. So if we solve for W in this case, it's negative 16 pounds. That means overall, we have, we're going to have to take out 16 pounds of water. That's calc number nine. 16 pounds of water to make this balance. So when we add all of these up, this should add up to be zero, and it does. And now we're gonna figure out how much water we need to actually batch out. Well, we take 256 pounds, and we have to subtract out 16 pounds of water. And that's 240 pounds of water that we actually need in our mixture. And that goes right here. Now, if you want to sum all of these up, they should sum up to 3,926 pounds. Because it kind of goes back to what I said before. When we weighed this material out, we weighed out either extra aggregate or extra water. And we have to correct for that. We have to get it right. We went through that to get these moisture correction factors that helped us get this right. These are the right amounts to weigh out for that moisture content of that aggregate. That's going to also cause us to change the amount of water we use. Here, and here, and here. And this is going to ultimately tell us what the, water con the amount of water we need in our mixture to make our concrete right. Remember, when we put all of this inside the mixer, and we start mixing the concrete, it will turn into this within about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the absorption of the aggregates, depending on lots of different things. But if we don't do these calculations beforehand, we're going to put the wrong water content in. And our water cement ratio is going to be off. So we're not going to be able to make consistent concrete. And that is why moisture corrections are very important.